Welcome, Zayo Church. This is Zayo at home. Thank you for joining us online this morning. Wherever you are, we just want to say welcome and thank you for having us this morning. Uh, before we begin, we are just uh, wanted just to say a few things at, at the top here. Uh, for all the information on updates uh, as far as the coronavirus goes, visit our webpage at zayo.church backslash update. And you can get a, an updated list on what we're doing, our response as a church, uh, and, and also how you can get involved. We want to be the church in this time. Uh, and also, we want to encourage you not to um, sit back in this time, but to engage, to help, to serve, to be available, and to give. Uh, it, wherever you are this morning, we encourage you that um, giving is a big part of, of what we do at this church. We give with our time, our talent, and our treasure. And we just encourage you this morning uh, to be a part of Zayo Church and to give faithfully. Uh, you can uh, give many ways at Zayo Church. You can give online on our webpage, you can give on our app, or you can text to give. Uh, but we just encourage you to be a part uh, of what's going on in this great church and to give faithfully. Now, as we go into this, I just want to share a quick scripture with you. Uh, it's Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. It says this, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who he has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. God, we look to you this morning. We thank you that you are the everlasting God. You are the creator of all things. Father, everything that we have comes from you. And this morning we say that you are in control. And God, we love you so much. And in a time of uncertainty, God, we look to you because you are certain. You are the everlasting creator, our healer. And Father, we just take time this morning. Wherever we are, we're in our homes, we're in our bedrooms, we're in our kitchens, we're in our living rooms. We're surrounded by friends, by family. Maybe you're alone this morning, you're surrounded by your church family online. But God, we just come together as a community to say that you are in control. And no matter what takes place around the world, God, we stop and we give you all the thanks and the praise and we look to you, God, this morning. We love you. Would you be in our presence this morning as we worship you? In Jesus' name, amen. Like you do 
just wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Welcome to Zayo Church Online, Zayo Home. Uh, my name is Jared Lyons, and I have the privilege of being the lead pastor at Zayo. And I uh, just wanted to uh, say good morning to you and, and welcome to Zayo Church. Uh, this is some crazy times that we're in. Uh, here we are recording this, and um, it's, just, it's just unreal to be uh, in this position. Uh, but we just wanted to say thank you for having us wherever you are. Maybe you're watching from uh, your home and a, a bedroom or your kitchen, your living room, uh, wherever it may be. Uh, thanks for having us this morning and um, just wanted to, to come to you uh, and just talk to you for a little bit. You know, these are some crazy times that we're in. And, um, you know, what do you, what do you do in a time like this? We're in uncharted territory as a society. We're in uncharted territory as uh, a humankind uh, and especially as a church. You know, we, we are a young church and we're already uh, having to experience something like this. And, you know, my, my hope and my prayer for us as a church, for you, Zayo Church, is that this would be a defining moment for us, that we could unite together as a church closer than we ever had before. Uh, we can take a moment like this and it could expedite our relationships uh, so much faster than we would have had it not gone through something like this. Um, so I'm just, I'm just very thankful this morning uh, for you, the church. And uh, so what, what's next? I mean, it seems like everything is changing day by day. And, uh, you know, this week I was praying and I came across this scripture that was, that was comforting to me. Hopefully it's comforting to you this morning. It's Psalm 112, 6 through 8. And it says this, Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will not fear of bad news. Hello. Their hearts are steadfast. It's important for us. It's a big word, steadfast. Why? Trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph over their foes. And it's just a verse that just caught my attention this week and was comforting to me. Uh, in the face of bad news, when we're facing this um, news of the COVID-19 and this pa pandemic, just this, this being in this place of what do we do? We shouldn't have fear. Fear should have no place in us right now. So before we start, I just wanted to look you in the eyes and say fear has no place here and that it's gonna be okay. Why is it gonna be okay? Because whom shall I fear? The Bible says, I have the Lord. If he be for me, who can be against me? You see, God is in control of this and we need to come out of fear and step into faith. That's the comfort we have this morning, that we don't have to live in a place of fear because God's not in that place. We get to step out in faith because that's where he is. And so we need to pray. We need to pray together as a church. Um, we need to pray together as a family. <clears throat> You need to pray together with your family and, uh, and war through these times. You know, we don't know how long we'll be in this position uh, having to do church online like this, uh, but what I wanna do over the next three weeks is bring to you a, a new short mini-series and um, just come, come into your living room for the next three weeks for sure and, uh, and talk about a few things uh, as we're in this little mini-series. You know, we can't <clears throat> ignore what's happening in the world but it is a little captivating. It's a little interesting uh, to see how everyone is so affected by this. It's affected everybody, every family, uh, every job. I mean, this has affected everyone. And what I find so fascinating uh, about these physical and, and natural disasters or these pandemics such as the COVID-19 is how it unites the public. You know, it's honestly even emotional to see um, how, many, how many great and moving things come out of a time like this. You know, so many great stories of celebrities and 
not only celebrities, but just the average Joes coming together in a time like this to make this world a better place. The reality is we're a divided nation. And in times like this, it's the opposite. It unites the nation. <clears throat> we're a divided church. And in times like this, it unites the church. I'll tell you, the past weeks have been extremely encouraging to see the church unite. I've been a part of a few meetings uh, with our local churches in Lake Travis and how unified we are. Uh, I've been a part of a, a few online networks I'm a part of and all the resources that are coming out of churches, how encouraging that is. Uh, I'm even standing in a, a church's auditorium right now who's offered to allow us to film in their auditorium. And so it's just really cool to see how uh, in times like this, no matter how divided the church is, this is a, a uniting time for the church. But outside of a, 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 a situation like this, you know, we find our truth from media, from political parties, from influential figures, instead of finding our truth from the word of God. You know, I'm thankful that we're uh, united around this. Right now, we, we are united but I wish it didn't take a disaster to unite us. It's as though humanity is at its best in the face of disaster. It's as if to say disaster is our great teacher. Well, what's on my heart today and for these next uh, few weeks here is to look at scripture. You see, God has given us a guide on how to treat people in the world and how we should treat each other all the time not just in the face of a disaster or a disease, but all the time. You know, I, I call them the one another's. In scripture, there are 59 one another's. And these one another's show us how we should be treating each other. And so after studying these, I've boiled the 59 down to nine, and we'll cover these nine over the next three weeks. So this morning, um, I want to hit the first part of this series. And so the title of, of this series is going to be one, Another One Another, and this is part one. Another One Another, part one. Well, before we get into it, let's just pray together. Wherever you are, uh, grab your, your family, uh, grab your kids, uh, grab your spouse, and let's just uh, take some time to pray together. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this day. God, we trust that you are in control today, God. We look to you for guidance. We look to you for hope. We look to you as our source of truth. Father, may we not turn to anything else in this time, but turn to you, Father. Lord, we love you. Would you speak to us in these next few minutes? In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, the first one another is love one another. Love one another. 25 of the 59 one another's is related to love. I'll show you a scripture, John 13, 34 through 35 says this, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Three times, three times Jesus says, this is how people will know that you are my apprentice. If you've been following along with us, we've been talking about the way of Jesus. How do we become a follower of Jesus? How do we become a disciple of Jesus? How do we become his apprentice? Three times he says that they'll know it by the love you show. Now, hands down, <clears throat> love is uh, mentioned more than any of the other one another's, right? I think it's safe to say love is the most important one. If we don't get love right as a church, as a follower of Jesus, we won't get any of these right. First Corinthians 13, 13 says, and now these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest, it's love, it's love. You see, if you don't have love for one another, you won't be able to show God's love to one another. Love is the basis. We have to have the love of Christ. That's what we were put here to do, to, to be the love of Jesus and to show the love of Jesus. I know you may have a political position this morning. Uh, you may have your opinion and your viewpoint on things. 
And I know that you probably want your position to be heard. However, you must lead with love. A great quote is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I'm sure you've heard that before. But my, my, my conviction is let's be guilty of love, not hate. Unfortunately, as you probably know, people build their reputation based upon their hate rather than their love. What makes the news today is stories of ridicule, outlandish remarks, and hatred. But what makes us feel good inside is stories of love, right? No one walks away from a hate, 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 hateful conversation and feels good about it. When I watch the nightly news, which I got to be honest, I haven't been watching it much um, because of this reason, is that there is about 20, it's a 30 minute segment and there's about 28 minutes of hatred, right? There's about 28 minutes of backbiting and um, just, just ridiculing people and obviously bringing up this, the sickness and disease and, and all that's wrong in the world. And then it's what's so unique is they take the last two minutes and they end it with a, a heartwarming story of love. They take 28 minutes, negativity, backbiting, hatred, and then the last two minutes is two minutes of love. I wonder why that is. It's because we all want to be left with love. We want to, we want to have that lasting feeling of love. That we want, the nightly news knows that, and they want that to be the last memory you have is this heartwarming moment. In a time like this, we are not hearing about all the hate. It's a unique time and all the evil doing of the people. We're hearing about the unification of the public and these moving and compelling stories that go with it. So in a time like this, it's so unique because in one, in one stretch, we're, 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 we're unsure and maybe some of us are fearful we don't know what the days ahead hold, but at the same time, there's this moment where we're being unified as, as an American people, as a world, and as a church. And so we're left with this mixed feeling. You know, I, I, this, this week I've been, been hearing all these stories about a uh, story about Brad Paisley opening up uh, a free grocery store for the public. And that's just so cool. Uh, Russell Wilson, along with some other um, celebrities, are donating uh, millions of dollars to feed uh, feed people and to, to donate towards food banks. Mark Cuban uh, is paying every single one of his hourly employees during this time, even though they're not working. Uh, sports stars donating monthly checks, their salaries to uh, the, their, their hourly employees that work the stadiums. I saw on the news um, last night that uh, Willie Nelson was holding a free concert online. It's just, just these cool moments where uh, people are coming together and celebrities are using their influence and their, 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 strat their skills to uh, reach people and help people. Well, let's let stories of love come out of the church. Let this be a time where people know and identify the church as a place of love. Let this be a time, a shining moment for the church of Jesus because of our love. You see, Jesus is love, so let's show the world Jesus. Let's show the world love. So the first one is love one another. Here's point number two. Point number two is honor one another, honor one another. Eight of the 59 pertain to honoring one another. Romans 12 verse 10 says this, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. I love that. Outdo one another. I believe that honor is a lost trait in today's culture. Uh, Jesus knew that this would be the case. So he said, outdo each other. He took it a step further. I, I know this will probably be lost in today's context, right? Outdo each other with honor. He's almost saying this, just treat it like a game, like game on. Let's try to, let's try to outdo one another with honor. Do all that you can do to show honor. And all that you do, honor one another. Honor is when you lift up people higher than yourself. Think about that. When you lift up somebody higher than yourself. You know, I've always said it that we are standing on someone else's shoulders. I, I know that I am in this position that I'm in today, not because of my own efforts, but because I'm standing on someone else's shoulders. I think about our elders, Pastor Steve and Pastor Jess. I mean, to be in this position, I'm standing on their shoulders. 
let's be honest, they had to carry me most of the way, right? I did not get here myself, and I honor them. This is countercultural. Because we do all that we can do not to stand on someone's shoulders, but instead stand on top of somebody so that we can get ahead, so that we can be elevated, so that we can progress faster and further than someone else. Well, God's given you a challenge today. Don't step on people, lift people up. So who are you lifting up today? Who are you elevating today? Philippians 2 verse 3 says this, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Wow, wow. Honor is to say someone is more important or more valuable than yourself. The problem is that we think ourselves better than other people. Well, here we're being asked to put others before ourselves, promote one another, elevate one another, lift up one another, find ways to bring honor to your household today. So love one another, honor one another, and here's the third point, serve one another, serve one another. Six of the 59 pertain to service to one another. Galatians 5, 13 says this, for you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for selfish gain here, but through love, serve one another. Through love, serve one another. Out of the motive of loving others, we serve one another. We're able to serve each other because we love one another. Before we can serve one another, we must first love one another. You cannot serve someone that you do not love. If you're not motivated to serve this morning, it's because you don't love this morning. Service is the opposite of our culture. You ever find that so many times in scripture, you read scripture, you go, man, that is not the way that we roll today. It's because Jesus is countercultural. <laughs> if you find yourself going against the crowd, against culture, you're probably doing the right thing because that's what Jesus was doing. Here we go. Service is the opposite of our culture. Our culture is about humans being served instead of serving human beings. It's all about me, how can I be served? How can I be elevated in this time? Instead of, how can I serve? How can I help? How can, there is needs out there, I can meet those needs today. Jesus exhibited the greatest example of service by taking the lowest form of humility and washing one's feet. John 13, 14 says this, if I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Now in Jesus day, they didn't have cars, right? And so they were walking around everywhere. They didn't have pavement, they had dirt. They didn't have uh, enclosed toe shoes, they had open toed shoes, right? So think about the time especially the past couple of days, it's been raining here in Austin, man. Think about how dirty it would be and how muddy it would be. Well, they would walk great distances and their feet would be full of mud. And upon going into someone's house, the very first thing that they would do is they would get their feet washed by the lowest servant in the house. It was probably the position that nobody wanted was to be the foot washer. And here we have Jesus taking the lowest form of a certain servant, grabbing his towel and washing the disciples' feet. I believe before we can be heard, we must first do something about that which we wish to be heard about. It's called having some skin in the game. Don't talk about how much you're bothered by the current state of our culture and society and world today if you're not willing to go out and wash someone's feet. A very strong way to say it is put down your $5 latte and pick up your $5 rag and let's wash some feet today. What are some ways that you can wash feet? I think it's a great time to talk to your family about how can we as a family serve? We may only be able to serve 10 people or if you're a family of four, you can only serve six other people. But, but what are some ways that you can serve? 
Are there some elderly people that you know, your neighbors, some people in your community, some people in our church that you can serve? Are there some needs that we can meet? What are some ways that you as a family, where you are today, that you can wash someone's feet, that you can serve? If Jesus said it was better to serve than to be served, let's just say that Jesus's way is better than our way. You know, I remember years ago when I was really studying these attributes and these qualities of these one another's, and I came across this, this um, one of serving people. And, and, and just, that, just that night I was, I was studying this, uh, I got a knock on our door and uh, I, I answered the door and, and there was a homeless man at my door. And I don't know what you would have done. And I think probably on any other day, I probably would have uh, closed the door out of fear or anxiety or whatever the case is. Uh, but, but I was studying these one another's and the Lord sent me a homeless man. And I said, okay, I'm gonna answer this door. Answer the door and it was a homeless man. And, and um, he said, hey man, I'm just looking for some work. I'm looking for some help and I don't have anywhere to go. And uh, can, can, I, can I mow your grass? Can I pick up some leaves? Uh, I'll, I'll earn the money, what can I do? And he looked back and he pointed at his two, two door sedan and his family was in the, in the small car with a lawnmower sticking out of the trunk. And I just looked at him and I mean, I, I didn't need my, I, I'm the kind of guy I like to mow my own grass and everything. And I just felt in that moment, how can I serve this gentleman? So my wife and kids, we all came outside. We invited their family in and me and this man just went and we mowed my grass. We picked up the leaves and, and, and I paid him to do it. Uh, but more importantly, we were, we invited them into our house and we, we fed them and we got to hang out to them, hear their story and gave this man an opportunity to work. I, I don't know what your situation is today or even where you've been on something like this, but I believe God today is asking us to be there for one another, especially in a time like this. What a better time that we can be in to love and to serve one another and to honor one another. I think all three of those qualities are really good for us in today's world. And so I just encourage you to talk with your family today about how you can institute these three one another's into your daily life, especially as you're being quarantined this week and as everything is crazy around us, let's love, serve, and honor one another. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for the one another's that you give us in scripture, ways that we can be more about others than ourselves. Father, the reality is, is that that was your way of life. You rarely talked about yourself. You were always concerned about everyone else. So Father, may we, as we learn to love you, may we learn to love people. Lord, be with us in this time. Thank you for what you're gonna teach us. Thank you for the stories that are gonna come out of this. Just as I started this morning, I think that this will be a shining moment for the church because people will get to understand and know Jesus by the love of his people. So Father, we love you and we thank you for this day. Be with us now in Jesus' name, amen.